to honor and recognize this evening, but um, within our community, I think most of you know that uh, Chief Moore uh, retired, um, and he is going to be dearly missed, but we were able to um, reach out to our new chief, um, Dave DeMitt, who kind of took over, I think, on the 30th of December, somewhere around there. Yes. So, been with us a few weeks, but I'd like to have him come up and introduce himself to you guys and tell us a little bit about him, about himself. We've seen him around town a little bit. He's been in the schools and met our administration already, but um, not the community. So, I'll uh, turn it over to you. Good evening, everybody. Like she said, I'm uh, Dave DeMitt. I've been here for about uh, three weeks. My first week, I rode with Bill, and he showed me a lot. And there's a lot, a lot for more for me, for me to learn. Uh, I retired. I worked in Riverdale, which is up by Chicago, Blue Island, Harvey, South Holland. I did 30 years there. The last 10 years, I was uh, chief. I'm uh, uh, still going to still going to school. Uh, seems like it's a forever project. I'm just finishing up my uh, doctorate uh, with that, and I'm, I'm hoping to stay here for another 10. To to 15 years or, or something like that. I've been in the community just for a couple weeks and I really love it. Everybody, everybody's been been so nice. I don't know if it's just because I'm new or people aren't just really that nice. And, so uh, uh, I'll be around. Um, I'm very active. Um, you'll see me out driving around. Uh, I do I do traffic. I'll be at the schools. I'll be at all, all the functions in the community. I'm a, a very very active and I want to become part part more part of the community. So if you have any questions. Uh, I, you can see me. I'll give you my cell number, my email address, whatever you need. All right? Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. All right. With that, I will begin with consent agenda items A through F. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Mrs. Long? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mr. Staub? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Yes. All right. Lots of good news to get to tonight. Our first one on the list is the Piatone High School Academic Student of the Month. It is an honor to recognize and bring before the board January's Board of Education Academic Student of the Month, Mackenzie Strau. She is the daughter of Steve and Casey Strau of Piatone and is currently a senior at Piatone High School with a grade point average of 4.2 on a 4.0 grading scale. Mackenzie is a member of the National Honor Society Student Council and Renaissance Club, as well as a team member of the volleyball and softball teams. Outside of school, Mackenzie has played on a travel softball team and records the girls' basketball games. In her spare time, she enjoys hanging out with her family and friends, watching TV, and working on puzzles. After graduation, Mackenzie would like to attend Illinois State University. Our next honorees this evening, uh, also from Piatone High School, is the recognition of our 2023-2024 Illinois State Scholars. It is an honor to recognize the State Scholars. Uh, the State Scholar Program recognizes Illinois high school students for their outstanding academic achievement. In order for Piatone High School students to be named as Illinois State Scholars, they must be U.S. citizens, residents of Illinois, perform in the top one half of their high school class at the end of the third semester prior to graduation, or score in the top 95th percentile on the ACT or SAT, and graduate in the year they are named as an Illinois State Scholar. Would the following students please come forward? Yosef Abda, Kyle Gatamabas, Julia Giese, Aiden Ham, Madison Kabelkis, Connor McCleverty, Michael O'Connor, Bradley Oliver, <coughs> Jack Stoltman, Mackenzie Strau, Olivia Wagner, Grace Ward, Lauren Werner, and Logan Woodcock. And after they get up here and get set, we'll get a group photo 
and then I'll give parents as much time as you need to come up and, and get some individual shots once we get them set. <laughs> getting them ready I, I will say that um, you know we typically we hand out the certificates three or four times uh, over the course of a semester um, obviously it was once tonight once at the Illinois State Scholar breakfast um, again at senior awards and then they finally get them for good at graduation so in an effort to keep them preserved and looking as nice as possible I'm just gonna hold on to them um, for for this evening but nonetheless uh, congratulations to all of our students we were lucky enough to have uh, nine last year and 15 this year so we're, we're very proud. I'm gonna have Mr. Spang take your photo and then as soon as he gives us the high sign parents if you want to funnel up and take photos feel free one two three one two three all right, parents. Come on. Let's get this done. You don't want to take pictures of No, I don't want to take pictures You can do that too. If anybody wants an individual with their kid, we'll, we'll get those real quick too. One second. You can go right take my spot. <laughs> Last call, any other parent photos? All right, congratulations. Piatone Junior High School December Students of the Month. There is one student from each grade level and these students have demonstrated outstanding behavior, good work ethic, and have gone above and beyond the call of duty at Piatone Junior High. The sixth grade student of the month is Gianna Pagliarulo. Is she here tonight? Gianna? No. Oh, all right. But, but I said that name right. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Yes. I was just with practice. Seventh grade, Yaslin? Acosta, is she here tonight? No. Uh, eighth grade, Joshua Delaney. All right. Come on.
66 um, of the approved meeting minutes of the March 21st, uh, 2022 board meeting. I'll entertain a motion. Yes, I will make that motion. Second. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mr. Stout? Yes. Mr. Uthi? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Report number 44 is approval and adoption of the second reading of the Press 110 board policies. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mr. Rettenhausen? Yes. Mr. Staub? Yes. Mr. Uthi? Yes. Mrs. Moe? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Report number 45 is the approval of keeping the closed executive session meeting minutes closed from July 2021 through December 2021. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mr. Stout? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Bettenhofen? Yes. Mr. Uthi? Yes. Mrs. Moe? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Uh, report number 46 is personnel. I will give you a quick minute to take a peek at that. Um, some addendums to the approval of personnel are listed in red at your seat this evening. With that, I will entertain a motion uh, to approve report number 46, contingent upon receipt and evaluation and employment documentation required by the district and the Illinois State Board of Education. So moved. Second. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Uthi? Yes. Mrs. Moe? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Abstain. Uh, administrative reports this evening, Mr. Stein? Uh, not a not a whole lot after uh, coming out of December in the break. I did have one FOIA uh, request from Mr. Bowden with regard to uh, the enrollment of the school district for this current fiscal year, which I sent him, um, and that was all in terms of FOIA requests. All right, Adrian, anything to add this evening? Yes, uh, the consumer price index. Uh, for 2022 came in at 6.5 percent so for the 2023 levy the district will have the ability to levy up to five percent given that we are task and that is it this is Morales. um so we had our data days last week and there's a lot to celebrate with pes data so bear with me i'm going to go over this really quick but there are some things that i have to highlight so as a building for ELA, we went from 60% of our students meeting and exceeding in the fall to 75% meeting and exceeding in the winter. And for ELA, um, two areas I wanna highlight, 64% of our kindergartners came in below or well below in the fall, and now only 26% of our students are below or well below. 
And then on the other side, looking at our second grade students, 15% of our students in ELA were above average or well above average from 15% and now 38% of our students are above average to well above average in second grade. And then as a building for math, we went from 73% of our students meeting and exceeding uh, in the fall to 84% uh, meeting and exceeding in the winter. And our goal is kind of always 80% because 20% always kind of falls into that tier too. Um, and then again, looking at that above average and well above average, this blew my mind. 16% of our second grade students were above average or well above, and 45% of our students are above average or well above average in second grade. And in third grade, 14% of our second or third grade students are average or above average in the fall, and now 40% are above average and well above. And I looked back historically, and we've never seen these numbers, especially in that range. So we've worked really hard at PES over the last several years to create a schedule and model to support all learners during our math and reading win time, the what I need time. We're able to provide early intervention to our K-1 students because our strong interventionist team that includes our reading, math, and primary specialists. Um, we can truly provide interventions and meet the needs of all our students in Tier 2 and Tier 3 in all grade levels because of the support that we have. And this also allows, because we're able to provide these interventions, the classroom teachers during that time, to target the students that may be average or above to really push them. And I think that contributes to why we're seeing that growth in that area. And we also had a professional development um, this summer, um, and we restructured our math block to teaching to the standards this year. And it may seem like such a simple switch, but a lot of work went into it. And my grade level teachers have done a lot of hard work around this teaching to the standards using our resources. And I believe that this differentiated approach contributes directly to this data that we're seeing. So I just wanted to share tonight this amazing data um, that we're seeing. And then upcoming events at PES, our K-1 STEM club starts tomorrow, and our yearbook club begins again next week. Awesome. The, the uh, unprecedented increases, is, is that related to the fact that our bar, bar was lower to begin with? No. No, because this is all, this is, a, Ames Web is an assessment that's used national, so there's national norms. So there wasn't a lower bar, you know, if you fall between 20% and below, you know, you're in this, you know, the well below, and, and it's broken up that way, so. So we're obviously doing something right to see those. Yes, yes, and again, this isn't the IAR testing, I, I'm, curious how this may reflect on IAR and we're not going to have you know these drastic changes but you know again historically we were seeing more kids in that average range where you know I may have reported last year that you know in the winter maybe 70 percent of our students were average or above average but maybe 60 percent of those were in that average range we're only 10 percent but now we're really seeing where we're moving them past where you know the expectations can, are. can you pinpoint specific things that yes yeah I, honestly i think it's the support that we have with our intervention team we have the reading specialists we have math specialists primary specialists el specialists that all work um we created a schedule again I've worked the last four years um, creating a schedule that allows all of our intervention time to be spread out throughout the entire day, that it's not overlapping, so our entire intervention team is able to service a grade level. We also provided a math and ELA um, time, uh, what I need time. And then uh, the, the structure of our math block, teaching directly to the standards using the standards as the guide for our instruction and then pulling in our resources instead of working through a textbook that we're just going page by page, we're using what the standard says and then pulling resources uh, to target our instruction towards the standard. So, so those sound like programs that we need to keep in place. Uh, these are programs that you're able to do because of the additional funding that was 
Um, or is this something they would have done normally? I, I think these were all things that, you know, COVID or not, we would have been um, wanting to put in place at PES okay, um, so for that early intervention. So it, we have benefited from um, these positions, but there are things that, you know, pre-pandemic or not, we would have wanted to create this model uh, to support our students because we know the value of early intervention. Thank you. Nice job. Just one thing, uh, we had a really awesome opportunity to kick off uh, the school year at the high school and the junior high uh, last Tuesday. Uh, we had a guest speaker, Terrence Talley, come in and he basically preached on us, or not preached, but discussed the ideas of uh, really being a community and caring for others and knowing that there's people out there that have your back that are there to support you. Um, you know, we don't really know all the time what everybody's going through. We come and we know our own life and we don't have the opportunity to always see what else is going on with, every, with, with others. And we don't know that. Um, so just bringing in that knowledge of knowing that others could be struggling with things and finding that support and just letting somebody know that you're there for them. We, uh, the junior high, we, it was just had an opportunity to put your hand on somebody and say, I got your back. Uh, just being there for, for others and letting them know that we're all there. We are part of this community. We're one school all together. Um, so just coming in each day with that mindset of knowing that, you know, others may be going through some concern, just make sure that we're being respectful and honoring them and, and supporting them when we can, at least to the level that we're able to do. So it was a great message to start off the year. A lot of positives across the board that I heard from staff and teachers and, and, um, and students as well. Uh, so really fun. Got to see some teachers getting some dance moves on. I never thought I'd see Dale Gibson move like that. Uh, <laughs> but it was, uh, it, was it, it was awesome in that extent. And then that that positive or, or you know, positive strong message uh, to send to our to our kids too to kick off that year was yeah. great. Coming back from break. Awesome. Uh, yeah, the, the the assembly was phenomenal. It really was. But uh, we are. Uh, before we left for Christmas break, we were supposed to do an eighth grade book reception. Of course, with the weather, it got uh, postponed. We are going to be holding that uh, this Friday, January 20th, uh, for all the families and the students to show off their, their book, their writing projects that they've done. So we're going to be doing that uh, for the parents. Um, we are currently doing our winter map testing right now, and we'll be holding our systems days uh, next week on Tuesday, January 24th, and Wednesday, January 25th. Uh, for that. Um, also coming up for for our, I mean, me and Jason for sure, all our kids, our staff, parents, the oh. five essential survey will be starting on January 24th. For us, we, uh, we typically give that through our social studies class for the kids. Teachers take it when they have an opportunity and we'll be pushing information out to parents as well. And I know Jason's going to be speaking about this, but we've had the counselors come over talking with our eighth grade team about the eighth graders going to be freshmen and uh, selecting of courses and stuff like that. And we got a lot more coming up, but I'll let him elaborate on that next. Mr. Yes. Okay. So speaking of that, uh, we've had uh, class meetings uh, with our counselors um, regarding the master schedule bill for next year and then the classes they're interested in. And our counselors are starting to meet, to meet with those very little kids now. Um, we started with the juniors and then worked our way all the way down or, and, and we're continuing to do that. So the counselors are telling us that those meetings are going very well um, and we're excited to, to roll out the schedule um, as soon as we get those numbers in. So um, other things from the high school, as Scott mentioned with the um, normally five essentials, we test our kids during PE. So very much, uh, you know, the same thing. That's the, the one area where we can, you know, reach the most uh, kids to, to get useful data and we'll be testing um, students, staff, and parents. Um, we've had two meetings now for our Piatone High School and Piatone Junior High School student handbook revisions. Um, so our, our goal is to have one more meeting next week. The following week, uh, have a parent meeting, uh, which we legally have to uh, annually every year. And then our, our hope is to have that in front of you for a first review at the February board meeting. Uh, so those have gone, um, very well. Um, just a few highlights sports-wise over the break. Uh, congrats to the boys high school basketball team. They finished second in the Kankakee um, Holiday Tournament. And um, they, uh, they've got a winning record overall, both overall and in the conference. And I believe Amy is going to speak to the uh, girls teams. Uh, just last thing real quick, uh, congrats to Kim Padley-Rulo for being our teacher of the month. Excellent. 
How many eighth graders? What's our class size going in? What are we losing going out the senior year? We have 109 for senior year. We have about 106. So it's pretty even. Pretty even. Pretty even, yeah. And I missed Wendy after Scott. So I got to back to Wendy. Before we shift over, Mr. Spain, I yes. a couple of things. Um, last year we talked about increasing the fees for industrial arts. Mm -hmm. And as of recently, some things have come up. There was a GoFundMe that raised some money that was to be applied to those fees. With the information that came up recently regarding those fees, I think it would be best to apply that, those donated funds directly as material for the class. So I'm curious if you can connect me with the teacher, that we can create a list of goods and get those procured. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Wendy. All right, just a quick sports update from the junior high. Um, we have volleyball in their second week of their season and got their first victories last night. So they're plugging along. Uh, as well as wrestling, we hosted our second home event um, last night for the wrestlers, and they're about in the middle of their season as well. And then we have seventh and eighth grade boys basketball and cheerleading coming to their end. Um, our seventh graders will start their regionals uh, on Saturday, the 21st. Uh, that's in Mantino. The eighth graders will do their regional uh, beginning January 28th, and we are hosting that regional. Thank you. Amy, there you are. Yeah, Amy, I've been in a spot today. <laughs> Um, okay, so just speaking on uh, all of our registration, um, we're going to have high school orientation for our 8th graders on January 25th from 6 to 8. And so we hope to see all our 8th graders there with their parents so they can receive all the important information for them to be successful over the next four years. Um, congrats to our girls basketball team for winning our Piatone High School Holiday Tournament. Currently they're ranked number 5 in the Associated Press Girls Basketball Bowl for Class 2A. Um, our cheerleaders just competed for the first time in several years at our ice cheerleading competition. Um, although they didn't place, they had a great time and it was a really positive experience and they're getting their confidence back up. Um, and then lastly, our unified basketball team has several games scheduled, so everyone is really excited about that. And their first practice is tonight at 7, um, and so their upcoming schedule should be available shortly. One of you might have mentioned this, but is there an alumni night at the girls' basketball? Yes, packed place. What night? Can you tell me, remind me what night that is? Monday. This, this Monday. Monday, January 23rd. Yeah, that's yes, mm -hmm. for sure. At what time? Just for people who might be So the game. sophomore game will start at 5.30 and the varsity game uh, will be following that. I know at halftime they plan on doing the same events they had last year, which is Toss the duck, uh, I think a half court shot, some other fun games for the kids to play. So um, um, Jill Schrader has ran that in the past. I believe she's planning on doing the same thing again this year. It's been a lot of fun. Do you know who we play? For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah, they're just they're second in the conference. So uh, we, we beat them by one at their place. So we're, we're still undefeated? We are still undefeated. Yeah, that's right. Everybody knocked that away. That's wonderful. So January 23rd, uh, pack the place. 5.30 for the JV game, um, alumni night. So for anyone in the community who wishes to join that event, um, please come on out to Piatone High School and support our girls. Jen Tikala. Okay. Um, so we've had a good few weeks since our last, I feel like it's only been a couple weeks since our mm -hmm. last board meeting. Time's going by fast. Um, Mr. Snowden, one of our fifth grade teachers, um, signed all of his language arts students up or gave them the opportunity to enter a poetry uh, contest through a company by the name of Creative Communication Poetry Contest. And five of the students were actually selected to get published. Um, and so um, we're very excited about that and he'll receive a hardcover book and I, parents are able to order. So he was really proud of that and I was proud of that too. Um, our Oodle chairs have arrived. Uh, those were um, because the Ed Foundation uh, gave us a grant, and these are chairs that are flexible seating. Um, they're stools, and they can be used as flexible seating for flexible teaching. Each Oodle has stacking sections that can be divided, and additionally, each stool can rock if we want it to rock a little bit for added movement. These stools are just one part of our learning lab redesign for engaged student learning and flexibility. So thanks again to the Piatone Ed Foundation for funding this project. They're really cool and for adults and kids alike, just for some 
flexible seating while you're learning. Um, congratulations goes out to Ms. Reagan Smith, who won the PTO pancake breakfast auction for pizza with the principal. So Reagan and a couple of friends enjoyed some wonderful pizza this week. We had a wonderful time uh, in my office. It was just a real Italian restaurant in there. Um, volleyball, book, and yearbook clubs are all up and running, and we are excited to kick off our brand new yoga club. Thank you for approving that. Uh, next month, our mats have arrived, and we're ready to go. So it's been a Roger, good month. were you, you were going to attend the yoga? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't say that. Yeah, I ran out of time. Yeah. <laughs> we're all out of mat for you. <laughs> Your pants were on bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> you better give him two minutes. Okay. <laughs> I say anything about <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, anything going on in tech? Uh, yeah, just one quick thing. Uh, we took advantage of a really good opportunity from Pearson and we migrated our library system to the cloud. Uh, there's many benefits to that, but the two top ones would be uh, much more reliable because they're, they're taking care of the service themselves instead of we having to do it here. And the second one is a reduced load on the shrinking tech staff that we have. Excellent. So. Good. Jennifer? Not, not smooth? That's good. That's good. Yep. Um, we just have a quick update for the uh, annual access test is occurring now for our students identified as English learners. So our interventionists are busy uh, assessing those friends within the assessment window. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it since our last meeting. Excellent. Thanks, Amy. Chris, anything to add to me? Yeah, last month we had 267 work orders completed. Uh, Pick had 27. Connor Shaw, 45. High school, 55. Elementary, 62. And junior high, 78. Um, we had a busy but productive two weeks for Christmas break. Got a lot of stuff done, so uh, knock on wood, everything seems to be going pretty well right now. That's good. And I'm going to keep doing. I'm going to keep doing that for transportation and maintenance, and I'm not going to say why. So, can I have one thing? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Um, I want to thank the board for um, approving our chess club. Uh, we have had um, three matches and a conference tournament, and even though we haven't won our first match yet, we've come close and we've won individual matches. So the way it's set up is uh, there's there's eight tables, and so. Um, you know, obviously to win the match as a team, you have to win five of those eight games. Uh, and so um, Coach Tully has taken those kids all over to Bishop Mack, up to Bloom for the conference tournament. Now we just have the IHSA State Series. So fingers crossed, they're having a blast, they're having a great time. So thank you uh, to That's the awesome. board. That's awesome. Like I said last, last month, it's great to have staff members willing to create new opportunities for these kids and kind of reach out to some of those spots that Maybe we've got kids who don't have something that interests them right now, but we're adding cool things like that, and it's it's fun to see. So that's awesome. Anything else this evening? Oh, Terry. No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, not much happening. Um, uh, moving forward with the new year, I've started the process of purchasing our government commodities for next school year already. So wow. that's a massive pile. Hard to believe we're already planning for next school year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anything else this evening from the board? Yes. Yes. I always have a couple things. I know. I just, know. just a couple house cleaning things. Yes. Um, or housekeeping things, I should put. Um, I meant to bring this up at the last board meeting. Quite a few people come to me and, you know, our bleachers, the railings, mm -hmm. they're always facing the wrong way. And they complain that they should be up and down the aisle. And after the complaints last night, I driving in the car, my little pea brain was thinking that it's probably in our best interest to make sure those railings are right, because all it's going to take is somebody that missteps and falls. There's a lawsuit there. But they're putting backwards, Roger? Or they're, you know, I think because when you fold the bleachers up, <coughs> Correct. you don't have to change the railings. But when they're folded down, you've got to pick them up and turn them so oh. that they face north and south. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll take care of that, okay. absolutely. I know yeah. we've, we've yeah. turned them for a couple, but you're right, we've, we've forgotten to do I, that. I turned them so Friday days. night, and then I know a Cole City fan turned them last night. Gotcha. Okay. So we just need to, you know, it, it's a, absolutely. a thing that we hadn't thought of before. And sure. So. And I apologize to whoever's job it is that unfolds those bleachers for the yeah. extra effort. To it's go okay, it's a, it's a team effort. So. Mm -hmm. and just one other thing, and this is, for events too. Um, suggestion is um, 
things, I guess, in the, in the stands got a little bit heated last night with the Cole City fans over kind of mingling with ours. And I got so, several suggestions that maybe we should put some signage up, like along that south wall. Maybe you could, you could put a big visitor sign up and home on the north side. Yeah, we discussed that today. Exactly oh, you did? to your point. We did. Okay. Uh, because of, of the, the heatedness last night, um, we, yeah. we discussed putting signs up. And when we talked to Mr. Strauss, he said that's the way it used to be. So. Well, I know a lot of other schools do that. Sure. And uh, it, it, it just makes for civility sure. and uh, enjoyment of the game, I think, because uh, one lady came up to me last night and somebody was yelling, the beat phone sucks in her gear all night long, and it doesn't make for a good time to get here. So. So just a suggestion if we Absolutely. prevent the Thank problem down the road. I'm going to jump on to your house cleaning slash keeping and just mention that I did receive a letter from Mrs. Jean Hespin regarding the disrepair of the portion of Blue Devil Drive that is owned by the Park District. Mr. Stein and I have had some meetings. Uh, over the years and most recently within the last several months um, with the park district so um, it just may be something that is an ongoing conversation and we'll keep everyone updated as as things progress with that so anything else this evening one other thing yes what's the status on bowling is bowling started yes. and are they practicing in town yet? yeah they're actually they have a game tonight in Lyle uh, they are practicing in town. Okay. Um, they were actually given access to the bowling alley before it opened to the public. Oh, nice. uh, so they've been practicing there. But prior to that, they were driving down to Kankakee and practicing down there. All right. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Any word on our vandals that are graffiti from here? Well, we haven't found the culprit, but I'm proud to say that our wonderful maintenance and custodial crew promptly got it cleaned up and covered up uh, this morning. So excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, we have an idea who it is. All right. Awesome. You know. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, it makes me feel better that you know. So that's that's good. So I uh, appreciate I know things are busy. Everyone is running a hundred directions. So I appreciate you coming out tonight for the meeting. I appreciate the families that took time to come out. Um, it really is a, a, a very great achievement all the Illinois State Scholars that we had here um, this evening. It's nice to see that number continuing to increase. Um, with the numbers coming out of Carroll's building, I expect the next, you know, few years, generations, to so just keep <laughs> up, in that, up in that number as we move those smart kiddos um, on through the school. So with that, I don't think we have anything for executive tonight, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>